Okay, often time when I'm looking forward to order something online, I look into Amazon, maybe AliExpress. But what if I was living in Ghana, Kenya, or Burkina Faso? Will I still go with Amazon? Probably not, because although Amazon operates in a few African countries, Africa has its own Amazon, and it's called Jumia. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> Come for Africa in tech and stay for e-commerce. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. My name is Isa and hope you're doing well. Come for Africa in tech and stay for e-commerce. And today we're talking about Jumia, the African online retailer. Now there's the thing, with a growing population in Africa, the rise of the middle class and the increase of internet and smartphone, the African continent seemed to be the perfect place for online shopping. From that moment right there, Jumia saw a huge opportunity to spread e-commerce across the continent, but it wasn't an easy process because think about it this way, the African market is quite traditional, meaning that I get to see the product first with my eyes, maybe get to speculate the price before I pay and also buy cash. So in order to adapt e-commerce in the local market, Jumia took a long-term strategy now, before I start going through this strategy, let me give you some key info about Jumia. Maybe that will help you understand that the company is legit because nobody seems to trust anything from Africa. Jumia is Africa's largest online retailer. Created in 2012 in Lagos by uh, Shanshan Poyonek and Jeremy Odara, both former employees of the American Worldwide Management Consulting Firm, Mark and Z and Company, just like Amazon and Alibaba, Jumia offer services and goods. Jumia allow customers to buy product online, like cell phone, uh, shoes, phone, groceries, and on top of that, Jumia offer bills payment, um, food delivery, uh, phone and data plant. Jumia is inspired to be the Amazon of Africa. Well, I know most of you have not heard about Jumia, but Jumia is the only and only African startup to be valued at over a billion dollars. It is the first African startup to go public on the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah, me either. At the time of its IPO, investors went crazy for the stock as they were really excited about digital payment and e-commerce in Africa. Check out the stock, by the way. Now, remember, e-commerce in Africa is totally different from e-commerce in Western country. And the first step that Jumia took was to educate the consumer by showing them that online shopping could be a safe place because there's only so much trust to our online business in Africa and the uncertainty of ever seeing what you order online. Then come logistic, with logistic being one of the main challenge in, in e-commerce, Jumia decided to create its own fleet of delivery truck rather than just relying entirely on a different logistic partner. So that way they can find a work around mail addressing issue in certain country, which is one of the big issue when talking about e-commerce in Africa. Jumia also adopted a payment method to match the preference of African consumer. Since 65% of adults in Africa don't use bank account, the website allow customer to pay in cash to the delivery man. And in order to offer a wider product range, the company worked with a variety of local and international partners, essentially becoming the gateway to brands that want to expand to the African market. Now, as far as the big global name, I don't think Amazon and Alibaba are ready to do what Jumia is doing or what Jumia has done, at least not at the moment. I mean, Alibaba has talked about African expansion, but at the moment has not entered in full. Amazon still offer limited e-commerce on the continent, but notably has started offering AWS services in the continent. So obviously, Jumia is beating Amazon and Alibaba in Africa right? But it wouldn't be fair to compare them. It wouldn't even make sense to compare them outside of the African context. Now, there's a big question whether Jumia is really an African startup. I mean, their headquarters is in Germany and the two CEOs are white men from France. 
Now, is it really an African startup or just another way for the white man to colonize the continent? And the answer is, <laughs> nobody knows. <laughs> okay, that's it for today's video. Uh, thank you so much for listening to my BS. If you enjoy the content, please smash the like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Please, it doesn't cost you anything. Thank you all. See you here next time and bye-bye. <laughs>